sweet tang of joy. Each happening was a deep experience. Yes. So the this last uh, one, the last one on the page on page thirty, we had covered that. I'll just kind of touch again shortly on it. So this, uh, as Ashwapati grew in his consciousness, or as layers of ignorance were just shed and shed and shed, he was becoming aware of all the possibilities which usually are masked from our ordinary consciousness. All the realms or the all the planes of existence which are there, but we are not aware of them. So in every, it it was almost like he was undergoing a, undergoing an adventure. He was on this. Uh, just a second. Okay. Yeah. So he was on this adventure. That. Uh, yeah, Shreya, are you there? Yes. Yes. Okay. Sorry, I called you back. Yes. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just touching upon the last paragraph that we touched. Uh, in every hour, loosed from the quiver of time. This is a beautiful imagery Sri Aurobindo uses here. So as if the time is a container in which every hour is an arrow. You know, imagine that a uh, a person who is using this bow and arrow, he's one by one, he's taking one hour, one hour, and each hour is full of experiment and discovery. In every hour, loosed from the quiver of time, there rose a song of new discovery. You know, how beautiful. A bow twangs hum. This is the sound that happens when one is using the bow and arrow. A bow twangs hum of young experiment. You know, it's a thrilling voice when you hear this ha this happening. The uh, arrow being released from the bow. Each day was a spiritual romance. You know, and we were sharing that the literal meaning of romance is not what uh, Hollywood and Bollywood show us. Rather than an adventurous story, a story full of interesting happenings. Right. So that is what is romance, literally. Each day was a spiritual romance. You know, each day is full of a new discovery, new realm after realms are opening to Ashwapati. You know, imagine as if he was born into a bright new world. Adventure leaped an unexpected friend. And during this journey, during this adventure, uh, adventure became an unexpected friend of Ashwapati on this journey. You know, it was just companionship of adventure that he was having on this journey. And danger brought a keen, sweet tang of joy. You know, whenever we have really thrilling experiences in our life, there may be a bit of fear and anxiety there, but there is also a lot of thrill of adventure, you know, thrill of what's going to happen next, just like we have in, you know, thrillers or movies, which are really mysterious thrillers, right? So what is going to happen next? So there is also a sweet, intense tang means it's intense. You know, the taste is very intense and danger brought a keen, sweet tang of joy. You know, and whenever we are over one obstacle in that path of adventure, we feel this joy that, yes, I, I did it. You know, we are over that uh, little obstacle in life. Each happening was a deep experience. Each happening was a deep experience. Now, this is, I would like to actually connect this with the, our daily life. Can our life, each moment, be a deep experience? Is it a possibility? Can we uh, have timeless moments in, in time, you know, timeless in time? Because who we are is limitless in a limited body. If that is a possibility, then we must be able to have timeless moments in trapped as if in time and I think that is a possibility we all have tasted such experiences the thing is that uh, one has to just die out of old habits of lifestyles and living and one has to live deeply almost like a pledge we do to ourselves that yes I'm ready now and can I live each moment no matter if it's a challenging moment no matter whether I'm liking it not liking it doesn't matter but can it be a deep experience for me you know and i think that would be really so beautiful you know if we can have more of these deep experiences in our day to day life uh, so that the life is not passing us by we are actually truly living life 
with all its intensity all its pain all its struggles and suffering and also its joys and pleasures and you know all the happinesses that it brings yeah so that was uh, where we stopped last and with that i would like to say that i would like to uh, work on reducing my speed i am working on it <laughs> and uh, whenever you feel ready to share or reflect or contemplate in between on lines just unmute and share right and i would be taking care that i don't go too fast yeah, yeah. So this is where we need to begin today, page thirty-one. Um, Shreya, would you like to read the one in green? I will not be able to read right now. I am parallelly doing some cooking, <laughs> so <laughs> maybe like fifteen okay. minutes later. Fine, fine. Yeah. I'll go. Yes, please. Yeah. There were high encounters, epic colloquies. and councils came couched in celestial speech and honeyed pleadings breathed from occult lips to help the heart to yield to rapture's call and sweet temptations stole from beauty's realms and sudden ecstasies from a world of bliss it was a region of wonder and delight yeah <clears throat> so this is what is happening there were high encounters epic colloquies you know when two people are talking or discussing or dialoguing debating with each other epic why epic because this is very meaningful messages are being conveyed to ashwapati in these encounters of the beings that are there the voices that are there in those realms who are speaking to ashwapati there were high encounters epic colloquies and councils came couched in celestial speech and as if there was a lot of advice being given to ashwapati council uh, referring to that you know as if a lot of advice or a lot of suggestions or things are being kind of messages are being given to ashwapati uh, by by heavenly beings you know uh, in celestial speech uh, a speech which only ashwapati now can relate to or understand or is ready to kind of is is, is porous to receive right is ashwapati is porous now to receive and that is why those speeches or encounters or colloquies are coming to him because he is ready to receive now and honeyed pleadings breathed from occult lips as if there are these sweet voices coming to him suggesting to him advising him and maybe pleading to him for for whatever you know uh, uh what has to be done what needs to be done in earthly manifestation sweet voices pleading and calling from occult lips you know something which is not earthly something which is not of the realm which are which we are usually used to all those voices all those words suggestions and dictates almost are suggested to ashwapati or given to ashwapati through these encounters to help the heart to yield to rapture's call so ashwapati is is being called to this intense delight of these experiences to help the heart to yield to rapture's call as rapture you know it's such a intense uh, ecstasy almost which the earthly heart is not used to you know whenever we are full of joy you know we look at our own being we just want to express it out you know we just want to kind of give it out uh, we are not kind of strong enough to contain it in the being right as if the whole container sways in this ecstasy which we experience from moment to moment time to time in our lives so here what is happening is that the delight is so strong the intensity is so strong it's almost pleading or requesting Ash ashwapati's or i kind of even cajoling ashwapati's heart to yield to the call to give in to the call uh, of this delight and sweet temptations stole from beauty's realms and what also is presented in front of him is 
uh, sweet temptations you know uh, we don't know in what forms uh, as if they they cre- they are creeping in from the realm of beauty imagine that there is a world of beauty full of beauty wonder and delight and these temptations are slowly going out of those uh, realms and presenting themselves to ashupati you know giving them their, their taste to ashupati sweet temptations stole you know with uh, really very kind of you know when when a thief enters the house for example very slowly gradually creeping in from beauty's realms and sudden ecstasies from a world of bliss it was a region of wonder and delight so it is referring to these regions that uh, that are unfolding in front of ashupati uh, hour after hour as we read you know uh, as the quiver of time is loosening hours after hours these realms of beauty bliss and wonder and delight are being shown or tasted uh, by ashupati yeah so these are all uh, actually we were sharing last time also these are yogic experiences when the it layers of ignorance are shed one after another uh, from the souls it's like a mask that souls wear of ignorance when layers after layers of ignorance are shed this is all the soul is kind of opening itself up to and the chapter the canto is also called the yoga of souls release the release from ignorance the release of Uh, the soul from the layers and layers and layers of ignorance and opening itself up to you know uh, vast possibilities or realms or planes of consciousness that are already there uh, existing parallelly yeah yeah who would like to read all now right their audience could receive a contact aid of mighty unknown thing awaken to new unearthly closeness the touch replied to subtle infinities and with a silver cry of opening gates sights lightnings leap into the invisible yeah so we had read earlier about his magic audience right so he is able to hear those voices those whispers and murmurs and mutterings which usually are not heard by our mortal ears again reference to that only all now his bright clear audience could receive so his uh, uh, this subtle sense of hearing became more and more brighter and refiner so that it could hear everything that was going on in this manifestation and also of the unmanifested you know um, when we talk about clear voyance for example people who can see things which usually are not seen by mortal Uh, eyes and that's also again reference to subtle vision so clear audience would be subtle hearing uh, that which the mortal ears usually cannot hear he was capable of it now and all now his bright clear audience could receive everything was received by his bright magic audience the word that we read earlier also a contact thrilled of mighty unknown things you know his being ashupati's being almost thrilled with this contact one after another one after another of mighty also magnanimous really grandiose unknown things uh, things which are not known uh, so far in earthly manifestation in our day to day lives awakened to new earthly closenesses unearthly closenesses the touch replied to subtle infinities so this uh, subtle touch uh, which he became capable of 
that awakened to new unearthly closenesses those closenesses which on earth we are not capable of having you know we have a limitations uh, we have limitations here being having the body and the gross gross sense of vision and percep perception uh, we see that we mostly fall into a trap of limits but now ashwapati owing to the fact that he is uh, shedding layers after layers of ignorance uh, that he is not this body he is not the thought he is not the feelings going beyond all these identifications that we usually have our about ourselves he was able to have this subtle capacity of touch where he awakened to new unearthly closenesses intimacies which which one cannot have on earthly domain the touch this subtle touch this capacity of subtle touch replied to subtle infinities which were opening themselves in front of ashwapati and with a silver cry of opening gates sights lightnings leap leaped into the invisible so silver cry is a, a reference to uh, you know a very refined form of noise otherwise when we have these iron gates you know uh, in our societies or wherever we are living they make a very interesting you know uh, not very pleasing sound when they open so one has to oil them then right but this uh, gates these gates uh, after gates which are opening uh, in front of ashwapati they almost made a silver cry a very refined voice a silver cry of opening gates and with these opening gates his vision his sight almost leapt as if it kind of jumped into the unknown or the invisible that for now which was so far unknown so far not visible is becoming visible and visible and he can touch and he can smell and taste all of that beauty which so far with gross motor senses earth senses we are not able to touch sense and feel so you know just reference to subtle physical domains very subtle realms of existence which are parallelly there but we usually are not able to access owing to the fact that we remain trapped in the earthly sense perception right Yeah. These are all uh, shared with those own experiences, no? Actually, yes. we used to see yeah uh, everything. Yeah. yeah. Coming. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, where his consciousness and vision grew, they took an ampler sweep, a loftier flight. He passed the border marked for matters rule. and pause the zone where thought replaces life yeah so now uh, with this expanding consciousness of his uh, his vision is uh, you know uh, the capacity of hearing getting to know about things it's ever increasing ever his consciousness and vision grew and also i think in one of the lines by shri aurobindo he says that there this sadhana or the path of spirituality or the integral yoga is you know we have to go from light to greater light you know knowledge to greater knowledge so there is no end to this expansion there is no end to anantata you know there is no end to infinity and that is why there can only be a beginning but uh, hope and thankfully there is no end it can, it is an ever expanding adventure into this vast 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 unknown you know this is a beauty and a gift of being on this path that the life will always remain a mysterious unfolding you know i would never be able to say one would never be able to say that yes i i have known what life is you know there is ever known more and more more and more that uh, that is hidden as if from us and the adventure is almost unending you know unending adventure ever his consciousness and vision grew they took so they referring to the consciousness and vision 
they took an ampler sweep ample means like full and rich you know sweep as if like i am covering an area so more after uh, you know uh, hour after hour his consciousness and vision they are covering more and more area in its fullness and richness and taking even loftier flights after flights covering more domains of all that was so far uh, you know um, unknown and invisible they took an ampler sweep a loftier flight he passed the border marked for matters rule now he is crossing you know he, this is a reference to uh, the you know one after another the worlds and planes that he is touching he passed the border marked for matters rule now after this border the rule of matter will not be working the cause and effect the pain and pleasure these dualities in which matter is trapped this will not be working this is you know imagine that one goes from one country to the another the, the moment you cross the border rules change you know the rules that were existing in a previous country uh, they would not be the same as in the you know even driving indications change you know, there is a left hand driving right hand driving what is the speed limit what are the rules on the you know the roundabouts all that changes but that is only a reference to a almost a horizontal domain we are not talking about that domain it's almost the whole dimension changes now after this border that he crosses uh, that was marked for matters rule that here is matters rule you, you cannot you know if you put your hand into the fire your hand will burn so it's the rule of the matter right you cannot avoid it but now after this border the rules change and he passed the zone where thought replaces life now this is a reference uh, to uh, if I, i was trying to find it i could not find it if he if anyone comes across this image uh, please share uh, so there is this image many images that uh, mother and huta worked on together you know reading from savitri and then drawing those figures and kind of visions so one in one of the images or diagrams mother with huta uh, have drawn these uh, planes after planes you know first there is inconscient and then the physical and then the vital or the emotional or and then we go further into the domain of thought and then over mind and then realms after realms it's as if Uh, the expand expansion of consciousness the states of ever increasing consciousness so ashupati now crossed the border where thought replaces life so in the sense he has crossed the inconscient then he's gone up gone to the vital the emotional planes and then above than that there is the domain of thought so this is what is referred to here and past the zone where thought replaces life life means the life energy the vital the emotional the passions the ambitions that is now replaced by thought intellect reason right so there is what ashupati is now crossing or passing by and then we go over and over and over and then we uh, go into the transcendental and then just there is complete unity and oneness where there are no divisions at all so we'll go into those uh, lines also later so if anyone comes across uh, they comes across this uh, this diagram by huta and mother i have not been able to find maybe i'll try again and try to search for it if it is available somewhere yeah yeah so he passed the border marked for matters rule and passed the zone where thought replaces life Yeah. Yeah, who would like to read these three lines in green? Suddenly he into a silent cell where world was not and looked beyond into a nameless void. Yeah. so now he passed the zone of thought he has he has passed that zone 
and out of this world of signs and symbolisms we were you know earlier we were talking of words and facts and figures then we come to subtle symbolism visions and dreams which are much subtler than words and then out of this words of signs and symbols he's actually even crossed that out of this world of signs suddenly he came into a silent cell now he's crossed all these domains of matter life thought and now he is entered into this domain of silent cell into a silent cell where world was not now this is really really very beautiful and also very relevant for each one of us where the world was not now as we live right now is that there is one person or like me and then there is the world and i also am a part of the world so there is a duality there we and the divine existence and the unmanifested you know uh, sorry manifested and the unmanifested so there is always this duality when we talk about the world world means that which is manifested right so that which is unmanifested and that which is manifested but now he enters into this domain where it's just completely silence almost an absence if if we can call it an absence rather than a presence into a silent self where world was not and looked beyond into a nameless vast now ashupati looked as if looked beyond all the life and matter and thought into this silent self a nameless vast this also reminds me of kabir uh, asking us to reflect or contemplate upon uh, the nameless and the formless that which cannot be named that which cannot be seen that which cannot be thought of and mind almost loses all its function here and that is why it is so difficult for our normal day to day existence to touch these spaces in in our lives because we are usually how we live is we we live as mental beings in as much as capacity like 5% 10% mental beings so we live as mental and emotional beings it's very hard for each one of us to actually lose uh, being a mental being right and that is where these tastes or touches that are given in our life that yes there is a domain beyond mind you know we all or a few or some of us have tasted those domains where mind does not exist there is no need for the mind to be there and where mind is not the dualities will not be there there will there will be just a seamless experiencing there is there will be a seamless all that is there is no you and me and earthly and non earthly so these dualities came to end in this nameless vast the silent self the immovable the immutable that which is never born never dies so this is the uh space that now ashupati opens himself up to you know uh beyond active mind what is there beyond our active mind the thoughts that go on churning in the head ever and ever and ever you know a state of consciousness which is aloof silent intense it almost also gives me very uh, close connection with this image of the self the silent self being a self aware screen on which all the movies and dramas are happening so there is nothing on this existence there is you know i'm just giving an image imagine that there is nothing at all in the whole existence but this self aware screen that is there owing to its presence the whole drama the whole movie is shown up on the screen now the drama may be really intense and murders and killings may be happening in the drama but for that self aware screen it's 
completely untouched aloof and it has never been touched with all that drama and the killing and all the you know uh, whatever happened on the screen and once the movie is over nothing happens to the screen and nothing forever happened to the screen while the drama was going on so that seamlessness of experience seamlessness of just this pure raw silent presence vast vast because there is no end to it all the drama all the drama of the whole universe as if is happening on this vast vast illimitable screen of this self aware presence without its presence nothing can be its presence is not dependent on what happens in the world or does not happen in the world whether i am saved whether my marriage is saved whether people are killed not killed whether the planet is saved not saved it does not matter a bit to that awareness it is still a drama unfolding drama owing to its presence its play you know that is where we come to the fact of being the world and the manifestation and the universe being the leela of the divine because divine is untouched with all that drama it is just a leela in his own joy in is in in his own delight that it, it he makes it happen it's we the human beings who take it so so seriously you know often uh, than not more often than not so it is and that is why it becomes almost urgent for us to touch these spaces within our being if i can call within they are not within the being they are just there these spaces we have all of us have access to this pure untouched presence which is more like an absence because it does not make itself felt and that is why it is called as nirgun it does not have any qualities it can be just shown in neti you know in negation it can be shown that it is not limited so we in english we call it that it is limitless but what we actually want to say is that it is not limited it is not of thought it is not of feeling it is not of color you know it we just want to hint that it is beyond all that and also all of this it's all inclusive and yet untouched and aloof so this is the transcendent realm that ashupati now touches where all is just one nameless vast the silent self that which never is born and never would die that which is the ultimate truth of each one of us here each one of us we cannot deny that even if we deny it is it remains our truth truth remains a truth you know by our denial does not make the truth uh, not a truth and falsehood right and the more and more we touch these spaces uh, for our own self in our felt experiences i think more our life can align itself accordingly to that truth otherwise the alignment is only towards the images sense perceptions the stories in the head the mental domain the feeling domain otherwise we are just aligned there right and this is just uh, a very grosser alignment we can and we are all capable of finer tuning refiner tuning in our life yeah. so against this backdrop if we look at these three lines very powerful lines all the world whatever is happening would actually seem just like a moving picture just like a drama but we are usually so absorbed in the story in the melodrama and the dramas of our life that they do not appear as drama at all and that is only because i am still ignorant of what true uh, lies beyond these pictures what truth lies beyond the pictures it's just my ignorance that lets leak you know kind of makes me feel that i am the one who is suffering uh, and it's good that we should feel that we are suffering because only then we de identify with the character in the story so suffering is nothing but a signal from that intelligence that i have identified too much with the character that i play in the movie i am not that character i am the very 
presence of that self aware screen owing to whose presence the drama makes you know uh, is made happen so can i look at from that point of view also or or not you know, whenever we become capable yeah there is so much time in eternity you know that's why we say god is really dayalu and karunamay and he understands <laughs> each one of us because in eternity there is no dearth of time in eternity there is no lack of time so we can forever be on this journey and in our slowness and you know whatever life after lives we can continue on this path but uh, as saints and miss masters have said that yes in eternity there is no time limit but for us human beings who are suffering you know we don't like to suffer and uh, world is not made for suffering world the basis of world is joy and delight and that is the very reason that none of us likes to suffer you know if the very same friend with whom i have a very good time if that friend becomes a suffering for me i would actually cut cut him off you know uh, from my life because uh, it's not possible for us to suffer for a long time you know so whatever we do uh, we actually do for the delight of the being the the joy of life Uh, that is the very basis of life and existence and once suffering has its own purpose and it's done telling me that hey you got identified with the character there is no place for suffering to be there there is no place i cannot suffer after that if i de identify with my roles that i play i i cannot actually suffer after that it is impossible life will actually be an unfoldment of joy and delight only with all its you know uh, challenges up and ups and downs obviously uh, but yes uh, suffering is not the necessary yeah yeah who would like to read i could go yeah these symbol figures lost their right to live all tokens dropped our sense can recognize there the heart beat no more at body's touch there the eyes gazed no more on beauty's shape yeah so now uh, as he travels from the physical realm and then the subtle physical realms of inner sense of symbolism visions and dreams you know all these are subtle inner senses now these symbols uh, lost their right to live in this nameless vast in this silence of the being as if you know imagine the whole existence to be a silent being in whose uh, being all this is made to happen so in that beingness in that oneness in that nameless vast all this sense perceptions even the inner senses the symbols and figures they were not absolutely required they lost their right to live you know as mother says everything has its proper place in this world right so those symbols are not required here in this realm there is no one who is craving to look at the symbols there is no duality right all tokens dropped our sense can recognize you know all the uh things that our physical and our subtle physical senses can recognize they just drop they were not required they are only required when there is a seeking personality and then it wants to understand more and more of world uh, only then the symbolism and figures and uh, inner sense perceptions are required but there in this oneness in this unity beautiful unity and we will read later that there one new just by direct and pure perception direct knowing that yes i know there is no second thought about it so knowing by identity there was no need of these uh, symbols and figures and all kind of tokens through which senses are made to understand some or the other kind of truth there the heart beat no more at body's touch you know the even the sense of heart beating 
you know this whenever we have thrill the heart is beating you know with the thrill so again there is a duality that i am the one who is the perceiver who is the knower and then there is something that is being known there is the duality there all that duality ended the end the ending of body body's limits and body's identification uh, it almost dissolved completely there the heart beat no more at body's touch when does a heart beats on body's touch when i know you as a separate person so to have that thrill or the heart beating uh, a separation is required if you are not separate than me then i will not be beating you know for example i am sitting right now here you no know, my heart is not thrilled by my own presence right so we love live in the world of duality and uh, in this duality i need another person to have that thrill of uh, heart beating you know uh, at someone else's touch but here owing to the vast oneness that is only there there is no other there is no other that is there that is not required the heart beat no more at body touch there the eyes gazed no more on beauty shape when will i admire beauty when i am separate from beauty you know i when will i get inspired when i see that yes there may be some seeds of inspiration within me but there is something else that is happening over there which i am full of admiration for so again there is a sense of duality there is some other being present this other was absent the otherness was absent all that was known was known through identity i am one with all that and that's why i know that that pure shining nothing else but awareness all the things are touched in awareness there is nothing else on this earth than awareness because only through awareness anything can be known only through a deep vast experiencing knowing anything can be perceived known so now this realm was of this pure direct knowing there is no medium usually we use the medium of senses perceptions uh, thought in order to understand something which is different from us that's why only i need the medium a telescope is required because i am here on earth and there is something happening in the universe so i need the medium of the telescope to uh, gauge or to look at what is happening over there but now in this oneness there is no over there there is just direct knowing right so this is the beauty of these lines you know it is almost very very deep very intense and if one can uh, touch or fathom or experience these spaces i think this is really so liberating first of all and uh, adventurous secondly and also so beautiful that one cannot even say beautiful that it is it is it's just so absolutely uh, something else other than whatever day to day life shows us right yeah yeah regarding being aware it's it requires so much actually we are living in such a unawareness and that yeah. to be aware requires a lot of effort <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> at least yeah. for me <laughs> yeah yeah yes and i think i i i've shared earlier also in a few sessions that it seems that awareness is an active press process or active practice although it may appear like that in the beginning but it's actually a cessation of uh, our doings you know we are so absorbed in doing and thinking and feeling when we are see, uh, stopping now when we are pausing more and more and not absorbed completely in thinking and feeling and sense perception all the time we actually see that this awareness is almost like a stream an ever present stream which is happening in the being so i don't have to become aware awareness is happening 
Now I just have to see where all am I ab absorbed that I am unaware of the awareness that is happening throughout in my being. So, you know, uh, also another imagery that we can also see it like that, that this witnessing or this awareness is an ever present stream which is flowing in the being. But I, owing to the fact I'm absorbed in thoughts, feelings, sense perceptions and etc, etc, etc of the world, I am totally unaware of this witnessing presence, right? So whenever I take pauses in between, I see that the witnessing I don't have to do. It's already happening. I just have to be available to that. Am I there? Am I there? And yes, you are right when you say that it almost seems like an effort because for now the mind's habit is to be absorbed in, uh, uh, you know, just continuous loops of thoughts and feelings and sense perceptions. So to get out of this habit of continu continuously being engaged somewhere, one may call it an effort in the beginning. It's almost an old habit dying in a, uh, a different kind of a life opening. Yeah. Yes, who would like to read? In rare and loosened intervals of hush, into a signless region he could soar, packed with the deep contents of formlessness, where world was into a single being wrapped and all was known by the light of identity, identity, and spirit was its own self-evidence. Yes. So these moments uh, of hush, as Radhika also was sharing, these are not very uh, usual moments for us on earth, right? These are rare moments rare moments of full of light, lucent, of hush, a deep style, stillness and silence of the being, deep stillness and silence of all the mental, emotional, vital, all the planes are just hushed. And this is actually what we, what we touch in deep sleep, if I can relate to that. In deep sleep, there is nothing but pure awareness, witnessing awareness. There is nothing, there is no content there in deep sleep. And that is why mind has no memory of that. Mind does not have a memory of deep sleep because mind is not active there. Mind is not even there in deep sleep. No? Imagine that there is this uh, wave rising out of this ocean of stillness. And that wave I may call as the mind or the thought. Now, more often than not in our life, that wave is very concretized. It is as if very solid, very hard. It is there. But in moments of deep sleep, that wave crash crashes back into the vast ocean of stillness. So the mind is absent in those hushed intervals. And therefore, there is nothing to recollect. Right? I cannot recollect anything there. But I will, because I will recollect only when I had been there, right? When there is no recollection, when there is no uh, presence of the mind being there, what can it recollect? And that is why we so boldly ignore these moments in our life where we have actually uh, delved or plunged into these deep spaces within because the mind ignores it. Mind says, no, it cannot be. Maybe it was just a figment of your imagination, right? So mind is full of doubt because it, it, it's almost feeling handicapped that bloody how, how on earth that I don't have any experience of it. How, how on earth I cannot talk about it because mind loves to talk, right? And that's why, for example, it is said that uh, stillness or the silence is the highest form of teaching. It's this Silence. It's not the silence 
before the questions it's the silence or where when all the questions have been dissolved into this vast oneness that silence of the being okay and these are rare moments rare and lucent intervals of hush now it is up to us actually you know it is up to us our sadhana our um, life as it unfolds uh, for us grace you know that uh, how much of it becomes our life and how much of it just remains a mental concept of the head how much of it becomes our felt experience lived experience these rare and lucent intervals of hush hush in rare and lucent intervals of hush into a signless region he could soar why signless because no symbolism is required here no symbols and signs are required here into a signless region he could soar ashupati could soar packed with the deep contents of formlessness now in the beginning when we touch these spaces they almost appear like a void like an emptiness because the mind is so used to full of rubbish contents that when it touches uh, when the being touches uh, or plunges into these rare moments of hush it feels very empty but here mother is also sharing in her own lines and shorbindu shares that this is not empty this is an emptiness which is packed deeply with the contents of formlessness it appears empty because there are no forms and even feelings and thoughts and sensations are subtle forms so we are so used to live in subtle forms we live in thoughts thoughts are subtle forms right we we have a sense that i have a thought so these are subtle forms that we are living into but this emptiness is deeply packed with contents of formlessness no forms are visible here even by inner senses and that is why it appears to us as emptiness where world was into a single being wrapped you know we were talking that imagine the whole existence is just one humongous being the whole world is wrapped is like of is being seized in one beingness there is one beingness to the whole world there is no other there is nothing that is outside of this beingness and that's why there can be nothing that is inside this beingness there is only beingness that is there because inside and outside refer to boundary right there is there can be only an inside when i know that there is an outside but all that is there is just one single being then how can be there any outside or in inside right where world was into a single being wrapped and all was known by the light of identity i know because i know there is no one waiting here to hear an explanation why on earth you know explain please so there is no other i just know by identity that this is it that certitude that surety lack of doubt lack of lack of complete doubt and all was known by the light of identity so all the formations also are known just because the formless is one with the formations the wave is one with the ocean and that's how the ocean knows a wave ocean knows a wave by direct identity wave is not separate from the ocean and that's why an ocean can never know a wave as a wave right for ocean a wave does not exist a wave may exist for a human being who is looking at the wave right for a ocean all that exists is the ocean itself 
even a blue whale or a you know all the creatures living in the ocean the ocean does not recognize itself as i am the ocean and there are creatures living in me all that the ocean knows is the ocean itself there is nothing to existence but the whole humongous ocean of existence so this oneness a ocean would never be able to say i know what a blue whale is you know just like the way we are able to know what a blue whale is by its body by its limits and by its properties an ocean knows the blue whale by identity it just knows what it is without the label of it being a blue whale you know that is the beauty of this uh, oneness all is known by this light of identity i know because there is only i that is that's why i know there is no other and spirit was its own self evidence so there is no other to whom i have to tell that yes spirit exists this is a self aware spirit who knows awareness awareness itself because it's a self aware awareness there is no one other that is standing at the back of awareness looking at awareness it's a self aware screen of existence who knows itself as itself and nothing on the whole manifestation is known as something other is happening there is this beautiful oneness that is present so where is the question of good and evil and pain and suffering and that's why for god pain and suffering does not exist for god and that's why god can be cruel that's why we say god can be cruel because for god pain and suffering and pleasure and delight do not exist all that he does he does to himself he is not doing that to somebody else a human being whose life he is taken in charge of so where does me and my story come into picture at all it's almost like begani shaadi mein abdullah diwana you know i have no role as my story to play here it's the divine play the divine is doing things on to himself and i am saying i am suffering but then we know that uh, you know what is the path to take when we see that we are suffering or the character in the story is suffering now this is the whole vast oneness you know almost the absolute almost pointing towards the absolute truth of the whole existence yes yeah yeah sure radhika yeah yes and these three lines i'll just read the last three lines because they are just in consonance with what we are reading right now and then we'll be calling it a day maybe the supreme's gaze looked out through human eyes no who is looking out through human eyes not the human being supreme's gaze looked out through human eyes and saw all things and creatures as itself there is no other and that is why there is no question of pity on anyone if i feel like doing anything i can do yes but there is no question of pitying anyone but that does not mean that we don't know we don't do whatever needs to be done we obviously get up and do whatever we feel like or uh, you know serving people and humanity and the whole of existence but that comes not out of a pity because there is no other that comes out of a oneness because if friend you are suffering you know your suffering is my suffering because i am not separate from you and it's through oneness that i reach out to you it's not through twoness that i reach out to you right and saw all things and creatures as itself and knew all thought and word as its own voice so even thought sense perceptions feelings it's almost a dissolution of all that seeming other into itself thought is also a manifestation of the self aware screen 
feeling and sense perception and all the dramas and melodramas are also a modulation of that self aware screen so there is no other that is there there is no other movie that is happening there is only one screen one pure existence of this vast silent self which makes all of this possible there is nothing else apart from that i think that would be also referring to uh, uh, i think maybe coming from upanishads and gita that all that is is brahman there is nothing other than brahman so thought feeling dramas the stories my life your life it is all a modulation of that self aware screen and not different from that at all yeah so who would like to maybe read these uh, last lines because again i i don't want to leave it in middle it's all in consonance with what we have been reading their unity is too close uh, whoever wants to go love is a yearning of the one for the one and beauty is a sweet difference of the same and wonder is the soul of multitude there all the truths unite in a single truth and all ideas rejoin reality yeah no so in this state of consciousness uh, of ashupati this state of consciousness unity is too close for search and clasp you know usually we whenever we talk of unity we say that there there has to be another right there has to be another 2 3 4 thousands of people so that we can experience unity right but here in this state of consciousness uh, which he is touching unity is too close for search and clasp so it is not a unity where there are two and then those two unite and they become there is a union there is a unity right that is not the case this unity is so much of a unity that uh, there is no other in this unity there is no other in this union it's just a unity by itself it's not the way usually we look at unity because for us for the mind to have unity there needs to be another right but this unity is surpassing the unity that a mind experiences because the mind knows only nothing but divisions or separations you and me your house my house your kid my kid the mind lives in that right we live in this division so here we can search for unity that i want to have a unity with you right but there is no other here so there is uh, it, the unity is so so close that there is no search and grasping for unity i am not longing for unity the unity is just there it is just its nature being united is the nature of this consciousness <coughs> and love is a yearning of the one for the one now usually how we see love is a yearning for another right love is a yearning for god who i see different from me who i am longing for right but here in this united state of consciousness love how is love felt love is a yearning of one for the one there is because there is nothing but the one so love is a yearning of the one for the one it's like dissolving in the oneness only and this also reminded me of these few lines by a monk you know italian monk where he says thou art the love with 
which i love thee so there is a complete union there thou art the love you are the love with which i love you there is complete merger there there is no two there is no duality there right so here love is a yearning of the one for the one and beauty what is beauty it's a sweet difference of the same because all that is is that nameless vast and now how it experiences itself in different 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 infinite possible forms and formlessnesses beauty is this adventure of its own creation and dissolution this is what beauty is all you know imagine ocean an ocean the waves crashing into themselves whirlpool and tides and all that happening into itself and that itself is beauty an ocean does would not know what is beauty right it would not know beauty by the label of being what is beauty it would just know it by identity right sweet difference so there is variation kabhi tides aa rahi hain kabhi whirlpools aa rahe hain you know kabhi waves aa rahi hain kabhi zyada Uh, you know more intensity tidal uh, waves are coming sweet difference of the very same there is nothing but that same existence that is just the same and that sameness has little modulations here and there sweet difference of the same and that's why god never suffers because all that is is god so god would never suffer even when there is too much of crime that may happen world wars have happened right world world wars have happened one after another but uh, we have suffered who who we ex- know to be as me and my story you know only story has uh, a lot of suffering as long as i am identifying myself as the character of the story but as long as i see myself that yes these are just happenings and everybody goes through the happenings i can also go through the happenings then suffering ceases to be then it just becomes a play and oneness is the soul of the multitude and only then can the uh, the being the one being that is there uh, can have multitudes so there is this oneness absolute truth in that multitude that multifacets that we see in the world you know so many different religions so many different paths to have the same uh, goal maybe but all that is allowed everything at has a proper place right and the soul is just the one there is only one absolute truth behind all the existence the oneness is the soul of multitude there all the truths unite in a single absolute truth and all ideas rejoin reality and this also refers to uh, you know shri aurobindo when he synthesizes all the different streams of yogas and synthesis of yoga how on earth can he do that this is how he can do that because he is coming he is coming from those realms he is touching and living in those realms of oneness of unity and he knows that each truth has its proper place and therefore nothing in world is absolutely wrong each has a pinch of truth and once put at its proper place we know that yes you know all works fine there is harmony right all the ideas rejoin reality and ideas many a times many ideas uh, to us may seem very unreal or you know maybe whether it would happen or not at all but here all the happenings all the ad- ideas rejoin reality as if they are made possible that yes they are real they are very much real if they have not manifested so far uh, in the mortal manifestation it does not make them unreal right so they rejoin they are coming from originating from reality and they go back and merge rejoin into reality so they, this oneness uh so beautifully you know described in these lines and i think they go further also but i think i'll i'll have to stop here otherwise i'll just crack my <laughs> voice yeah
Yeah, anything so far? Yeah, in uh, those lines, no, in rare, loosened, I mean, yes. Uh, yes, intervals of hash. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the sign, the, this reminded me of those lines in, from the uh, book of Divine Mother, book three, mm -hmm. Canto to Adoration of Divine Mother. No, after he, Ashwabhati, got the glimpse of the Divine Mother's darshan, actually. Mm -hmm. These lines he used to utter, I mean, this light comes not by struggle or by thought. Mm. In the mind, silence, the transcendent adds, and the hushed heart hears the unuttered word. Beautiful. So beautifully, yeah, he brought. Beautiful. First time yeah. I, when you are. Which, which page number is that, Chitraji? Uh, it is uh, 315, one, 315. Uh, okay. 315, adoration Beautiful. of Divine Mother. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. yeah. Very beautiful lines, really. Yeah. How Sherbindo broad, I mean. <laughs> yes. Really. So much beauty in the words, yeah. right? It's almost yeah. seems like impossible. Yeah. 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 Okay, then. Uh, if not anything, thank you for joining. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks.